You're watching Train Man TV. I'm Alan. And I'm Christian. And he's Bob. Though Bob won't be saying much in this TV program. No, I definitely won't be upstage by painting, thank you very much. <laughs> And remember the time we actually went into a closet? I mean, that was such an amazing experience. All of those design labels. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. It was really astounding. It's a bit like that scene from The Devil Wears Prada when they go I into that, that, that storeroom thingy at the back. Oh, absolutely amazing. Wow. Aladdin's cave. Really, really astounding. But I mean, it doesn't matter what role she's ever in. It always looks like she's just stepped off the front page of Vogue. And that's quite something to look like you've stepped off the front page of Vogue when you're playing a drag mule. Who gets beaten up all the time? Oh, I wonder if she's still getting beaten up in scenes or if we've missed all of that. Well, I certainly hope so. I'd like to see all of the makeup that goes into that. Oh, would you like a bit of violence, don't you? <laughs> Just a little bit. Well, on set. God, I don't believe they have to get up this early. I know it's quite hectic. The life of an actress is not easy. It may look glamorous, but it's not. Well, they better have some coffee ready for us. Well, I certainly hope so. Oh, look, I think we're oh, here. Yeah. Generations remains the most popular soapy on South African television. We caught up with Bollywood actress and producer Tarina Patel, who plays the role of Karishma. We went behind the scenes to see how Tarina brought this character to life, drawing on her own brand of glamour and style with the helping hand of Natalie, costume designer extraordinaire. This is the strongest department. Um, she's absolutely incredible. My first meeting with Natalie, um, we discussed looks and um, Natalie had a very strong direction that she wanted to take for me. Um, and uh, the, the pictures as references that she showed me um, were outstanding. It's exactly what, I know it's a different character than I'm playing, but it's exactly what I would mm -hmm. wear for myself. And I love that she had taken beautiful silhouettes, beautiful fabrics, different cuts, um, played around with characters, tried to make me look as glamorous despite being um, without pocket and out of pocket and in jail and out of jail and being beaten up. I still had, you know, the remnants of this fabulous life that she led. Um, and Natalie was absolutely incredible. She's such a beautiful woman. She's so great to work with. Well, it's very tempting because with a body like um, Terry Patel, <laughs> the looks of Terry Patel, you just want to make her look like a ramp model all the time. Once the costumes have been finalized, a visit to the hair and makeup department is essential to creating a glamorous on-screen persona. So Bongi is the hair makeup artist. She's very, very talented. She's been in the industry forever. She's worked on various mediums. She's super talented, well-loved, and she's just adorable. We're just going to do a touch-up for my next scene. Awesome. Okay. You know what, Bongi? Try, yeah. and try, try and make her look beautiful. I'm going to try. This room is where it all happens. Oh. Like what happens here stays here. You know that Generations is the best. They have a beautician coming once a month and a food with Masala. Oh wow, you guys are quite pampered. We are yeah. so pampered. Busy shooting schedules and crack of dawn call times are all part of a day's work on a TV series. I'm earlier. I will never be late, but I'd rather be early. Today I needed to be here at quarter to six um, to be on my makeup chair at seven. I think I was here like at twenty to seven, and they were like, "Guys, give me time. Like, you know, we need like, time to set ourselves up." Yeah. I'm always early. And she loves my massages. Oh God! And he gives me the best, best, best massages. But one thing about her, she knows her stuff, because she does. She's a star. Uh -huh. yes, yes. She's a star. She knows her continuity. She even knows how to keep um, images for a particular scene. model all the designers want in their dresses but there's catch he's a man yes patient is a man as many women out there are exploring the men's section of the stores so Cara Delevingne is now the face of DJ and white men so I mean we're seeing that you know more men are wearing women's clothing more women are wearing men's clothing we saw it at the Gucci um, fall winter 2015 mm. collection is this a trend that will stick 
Well, you see, the thing is, straight men think attempting to do something androgynous means you have to go the full hog. Precisely. You're just taking an element of male or female dressing and you're integrating it into your wardrobe. So, I mean, even what we're seeing in terms of international collections, like the Givenchy collection, the men were still wearing men's clothes, but all of their fingernails were painted. So it's almost as though we're doing away with some of those gender boundaries. I think it was um, Selfridges recently that did an A-gender range, mm. which I thought was quite fascinating because the idea there is that you have clothes that men and women can wear but we're doing away with some of that gendering in terms of dressing but when it comes to a man wearing a skirt people still seem to get quite uncomfortable with that concept one of the other interesting things I, I think as well is that we in this country are perhaps a little bit more accepting we are an Afrocentric country um, we get a lot of people from other African countries coming here. Yes. And I mean, the traditional African dress seems a bit sort of weird for Western culture. They see it as more of a, a man wearing a dress, mm -hmm. whereas with us it's part of our culture. Absolutely, I mean that's so true because when you think of traditional forms of dress, I mean I come from an Indian background, and there a man wearing a dress wouldn't be out of place. But when it comes to Western culture, I think there is still this slight discomfort uh, you know, in terms of a man in a skirt or a man mm. in a dress. Mm. Though, you know, having said that, there are lots of um, members of the younger generation who are starting to adopt this trend. I mean, recently we saw Jaden Smith actually wearing mm. a top shop dress from the female collection and he was proudly wearing that. Yeah, I mean, and Jim, Jimmy never said that the JMB met this year. Exactly. I mean, he didn't arrive in a blonde wig, mm -hmm. he just put on a dress. But looking at the rest of 2015, 2016, do you think we're going to see more men actually wearing female clothes just out in public? Well, I mean, one man has Caitlyn Jenner. That's true, Caitlyn Jenner has. I think that's slightly different in the sense that that's, you know, more a total, you know, transgender situation. But he has done that, so, and that's been incredibly, incredibly popular. But I think that's not necessarily just wearing female clothes. I mean, his whole gender has changed, um, so that's quite different in that sense. You know, we did break one of the cardinal rules of the series. What's that? We used the K-word. Ooh, the K-word. Yes, Kardashian. Kardashian. We're not allowed to mention the Kardashians in the series. Definitely not. It is banned. It's no K-word. Cut that, cut that, cut that. No K-word. So, I'm totally cool with the whole androgyny thing. You know, women wearing men's clothes, men wearing women's clothes. But there is somebody who's been on social media recently, total no-no for me. Do we have a name? Well, I think we need a visual reference here. The police officer was merging towards the front and the car gunned a little right and then the police officer kind of submerged and both of them interacted and it was a full twist about and the police car just twist around like a tornado girl. Well, we wouldn't be trend men if we weren't spotting trends. Even trends in the world of sport, believe it or not. Well, I guess that depends on if you think about this next activity as a sport. Let's see what you think. Olympic officials are thinking about getting rid of Greco-Roman wrestling and replacing it with pole dance. There's a heavy push to add pole dancing to the Olympics. It's pole dancing, people. It's back. I'd like to see you try it. Go, 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 go. Pole dancing is your profession. You don't think of males in pole dancing. And that's why I'm here. I'm 250 pounds. I have to move that up and down a pool.
but I had to lie down for days after that. <laughs>